What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy the Tech Teacher and we're back with another product tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at the Xbox Series Elite 2 controller. But this time I'm going to be showing you guys how to remap all of the buttons. So if you wanted to map some of these face buttons to the paddles, or even if you wanted to do something a little crazy like map the A button or X button to the trigger for some odd reason. Um, after you watch this video, my goal is that you will have the knowledge to, be, to um, go ahead and do that with your controller. And there's also a little Easter egg hidden in this controller inside the accessories app that I'm going to show you guys at the end. So make sure you watch the entire video. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys, the first thing you want to do is go into the Microsoft Store and in the search bar type accessories. You should have Xbox accessories app open up. You want to download that and then open it. I already have it downloaded, so I'll just go ahead and open that big screen it. And um, once you get that open, if you don't already have a controller connected, it's going to ask you to. Mine is connected via a Windows 10 thumb drive um wireless device i don't really like working off of the bluetooth just because it disconnects every now and then and that can be really infuriating so i generally just use the thumb drive that microsoft actually sells or i'll plug it in i just went ahead and plugged it in just to make sure that all this goes along smoothly my profile is tied to the controller and I also have three different profiles. I only use the first two, one for Call of Duty, the other for Multiverses right now. Um, but we'll go ahead and actually jump into the third one. You can choose which one you're actually going to configure by pressing these, this little middle button here on the actual controller and um, lighten up all three to get to the third one. So the first thing we're going to take a look at on this screen is going to be these three dots right down here. Um, if you had an update available, then it would say it here. It would let you update it, but of course we don't have an update available. You can also rename your controller if you're into that type of thing. You can make that controller vibrate, which you may have just heard on the mic. And you can also turn on something that they call Copilot, but you have to have more than one controller on when you're doing that. It says here Copilot links multiple controllers so that you and another gamer can use them as if they were a single controller. Copilot is only available when two or more controllers are turned on so it sounds like a pretty cool concept nothing i've ever tried before however and then it also would show your battery level if we weren't plugged in right now shows your firmware version right here so we just go ahead and click the back button this here is kind of like a little help desk it pulls up your help bar in your browser and this here is the test mode so um in this mode you can take your controller and just test the different buttons just to make sure everything is actually working. And when you want to exit that, just press these two buttons at the same time and that gets you right out of there. So now we're going to take a look at the configure tab. This is where you would actually go through and create a new profile. And then you could take these profiles and assign them to the three different slots that you have available on your series two remote. So we're going to be looking at the third one here and we'll go ahead and create a new profile we'll just call it profile 2 and you're welcome with this big old map of thing that looks a little bit intimidating at first glance but once you actually take a look at it you see that it, there's not really much to it it's just letting you know the straight line x is mapped to x so let's say that we didn't want x to be mapped to x or better yet we wanted one of these bumpers mapped to x and you could also go here and map that one to X as well. So now you have three X buttons in theory, although that's a bit goofy, but um, it's definitely possible. And that's really all there is to it. If you wanted to map, say, the trigger button to A, you could absolutely do that. Boom. Now your trigger button is, button is A. And um, another function that the Elite 2 has that I think is really cool is you can use the shift button. So let's say we made this paddle the shift button. Now we could take this bumper here and our shift button could be, let's say, left trigger. So now anytime that we hold together this paddle, which is the shift button, in combination with this button here, it would actually act as if we were pressing the left trigger, which unlocks a whole new um, combination vault that you can tap into 
if you wanted to get that intricate with your controllers other than that you can go into your more detailed functions like the left stick you could see exactly how your range is working on that a little funky because if i go to the side it's actually trying to switch tabs on me and you can actually change your sensitivity curve depending on what you find more comfortable honestly i just leave mine on default calculation just radio exactly how it came as you can do the exact same with your right stick test out the range of motion make sure that it's all there change that same um, sensitivity curve if you wanted something different calculation as well and then your assignment you could change as well if you wanted it to be primary or that shift button that i was talking about before triggers you can test your triggers to make sure that you have your full range of motion there and you could also adjust dead zones for triggers so if you feel that you're actually touching on your trigger which mine actually doesn't have because the second i actuate it is actually showing but if it didn't then you could actually pull back this dead zone a bit at the end of your trigger pull or at the beginning just to make it a little bit more responsive as far as vibration goes you can change how intense your vibration is um, not just amongst the entire controller but it gets it breaks down into sections so you can have the left trigger left main right trigger and right main respectively and as you adjust them it adjusts on the actual controller and you can see on the screen the varying degrees of vibration so last not but not least is actually the color this is that little easter egg i was telling you guys about that i did not know the series to actually have it you can actually change the remote of your button up here so let's say you want to go purple or something like that and that actually reflects on the actual remote itself so i'll just throw up a couple of pictures that i took of my remote with a couple of different colors but it's a really cool thing if you wanted to get a little bit of customization out of these series 2 remotes I know there's not a whole bunch that we can do with Xbox having their ID lab and you being able to change the entire shell and coloring of the regular controllers and them not offering something like that with this controller. It's kind of mind boggling to me. And hopefully we get it with the refreshed um, Elite controller that we're hoping to see in the next couple of months. But that remains to be seen. So until then, we can change our colors of our Xbox button, which to me, it's pretty cool. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. If you did learn anything new from the video or just in general enjoyed the video, make sure that you leave a like and also subscribe down below. And also go ahead and comment um, down below as well with any new video suggestions or um, ideas that you may have. I try to read as many of those comments as I can. So your input is always appreciated. Thanks for watching and have a good day.